Hello everybody and welcome, it's Vidan here, so glad that you can tune into another video. Today, in just about 40 minutes, I did one of the easiest, um, kind of least tiers elite runs I've done. So this is going to be a super easy 65 tier strategy that was heavily inspired by Feed Me Pie. We just did a co-op run and then I thought, okay, I'm just going to translate these ideas onto solo and it worked perfectly. So we're going to begin with starting with a farm on round two and then we got a boat and then we got our value bananas and then we got a zili okay so after we've got valuable bananas then go and get a bank at the end of round 18 or join round 18 sorry and now we need to place down a, another boat this boat is important it is going to be our boat gone that we're going to get to degree 40 okay so the strategy is to rush a degree 40 boat gone we can go and get into zero one zero for now but try and copy this placement because it is like i said important he needs to be able to hit well at the end and if you want you can get the first cross path on it as well just just to keep defense easy and the overall arching idea for farming which i believe is actually really quite optimal is okay so we've got the bank down which we got from zero three zero so notice that we didn't bother getting two two zero zero farms and then do the clever sacrifice trick none of that we just literally bought it outright then we're going to go and get a merchant man and then what we're going to do is we're going to collect from the bank and build an opolis and the opolis is actually going to go and sacrifice the bank to it the reason that we're opting for this is basically because it's the most efficient for minimal tears expenditure um so obviously we're doing least tears this is just what we have to do it's not like the prime eco optimization but it's going to leave us in a really good position okay and then once we've got the opolis then all we're going to get is a brf and that's going to be enough for our eco because we will get ultra boost later but i'm sorry that's a bit of a mouthful so let's just um watch the footage here instead so like i said we've got merchant man as early as we can and now the bank's getting nearly full also, make sure whenever you have leads, you've got a Zeely set on strong, by the way. Um, you want her to prioritize the leads, of course, because we've not got hot shots yet. Now we can go and um, place down a village. You want this village to be able to encapsulate the range of the boats that we're going to place. Now, I do want to make a little disclaimer again. Place a Zeely higher up than what I did because you want to fit another village above this one later on. The reason for that is we're going to get a homeland, okay? So place a Zeely a little bit higher up than what I have. Um, and I'm sorry if you've got to this point in the video and Azili's there. It doesn't make that much of a difference though, because it basically means you'll just have to buy a bigger radius and it's one tier loss. So um, yeah, but that's something I didn't do optimal here. We could definitely shave off a few tiers, but it was just an absolute rapid fire run. Okay, so now I'm just keeping an eye on everything um, because I really want to get this Opolis as soon as possible. So the first thing to buy is Monkey City. And then it's just basically, let's see when the bank's full, are full enough and we've got enough saved up cash so that we can go and get the opolis okay and also i am really sorry this is a late upload but you can definitely go and snipe these top 50 positions easily um the reason it is late is because i kind of got a bit of motivation because i saw that we're near a thousand subscribers so that is absolutely amazing so uh, if you haven't already please feel free to subscribe but we're gaining on a thousand subscribers so that's just a little bit of motivation for me and honestly i did actually enjoy this this is in my opinion way easier than normal like so much easier than the normal run because it's not really any difficult tiers and what you'll find is that we've got a really nice strategy for tier one again from feed me pie that makes life a lot easier okay so now we've got the opolis down um life's going to be pretty much good what we can build is we can go and get a uh, zero not zero sorry one three zero on the p lord okay so we're just buying the first cross path with it and then we can get it to the three the third path because that's going to defend really easily for us and then we're going to go and build a banana plantation make sure of course it's in range of the opolis so we get extra money and it's discounted okay so for tier one because we're not going to really do anything much now until we get to tier one Basically, we're going to get Overclock, then we're going to get a 420 um, Dartling, okay, so Paxel or Plasma Accelerator, and we're going to Alk Buff it, and that's going to do Tier 1. So that's a really interesting way to approach um, Tier 1, because I originally wanted to try doing something with like Pirate Lord, and it wasn't really effective at doing it, but just getting an Overclock on a Dartling does wonders. So that's a really nice little thing to do. What I'd recommend doing as well is that you can go and get Overclock before you build the Paxel, but it doesn't really matter too much. It's just a little bit of extra defense we can have. Um, but we're going to basically target the Paxel so that it's not hitting the boss at the start, because we don't want to prematurely kill the boss and then not have our defense set up to go and kill him. Okay, so here we go. Let's go and build the um, Overclock. I'm going to put it on fast speed here because... Um, 
it shouldn't be too hard, honestly. All you need to do is just go and get the 420, keep it overclocked, and then when the um, balloons spawn from the uh, Balloonarius kill, literally just trace your finger along the track path that they're following, and it should pick up pretty much every single one of them without even letting them get very far, okay? So it's a really nice little strategy. In the meantime, you can upgrade the Pirate Lord 1 to 140 just for a little bit of extra help. And then we're going to basically just save up for BRF. Now, I did leak too many lives there, and that was just because I was playing a bit haphazardly. So just play with a bit of diligence, and I promise you, you will not have that much issue with this. So as you can see, it didn't even get that far at all, and we've got an easy tier 1 kill, which is really nice because we will make use of Ray of Doom later. Now, on round 55, 56, buy Ultra Boost. Start Ultra Boosting your BRF to make more cash. And then once you've done that, now you're going to get this 140 to 150. And you're going to go and set him on um, last, of course. And now start Ultra Boosting him during the Tier 2 kill, okay? So just to clarify, we got an Ultra Boost. We initially put it on the BRF to make that extra income, and now we're putting it during the kill on the Pirate Lord to eke out our DPS. Now, this is where I made a mistake, because I can't fully fit this village far to the left. So that means I'm going to have to buy bigger radius um, to get the camo in range for the Pirate Lord, because obviously if we get Homeland, it also enables Pirate Lord to see camos, which will help a lot. But... Um, I messed up the placement. So this is immediately easy for you to go and shave off one tier from this. So I want to see some people getting 64 because um, it should be really easy. So then I was thinking, oh no, where do I place it? Is there anywhere that's recoverable? And then I decided to cave in um, because we know that there basically isn't. So I'm just going to literally place it down here and I'm going to have to go and buy bigger radius on this village. That's a waste of a tear, but it's okay. Make sure as well to keep overclocking or ultra boosting, sorry, the Pirate Lord. And now we can go and get Call to Arms. The idea is, is that we're going to use Paxel and Call to Arms and Pirate Lord for this kill. What you may need to do, but I don't think you really need to, is um, use Paxel to help. I'd say for the final two bars, keep him towards like near the end of the track so we can pick up any leaks, okay? Because that's when things get a bit scary. And obviously, at the end, make sure to go and save a Hex ability and Totem for it. Um, you should as well try and save some lives as much as you can. So you'll see that I made a few mistakes here on 63. You just need to make sure that you... Um, prioritize the use of the Paxel when you can because it will help clear up like clusters of balloons quite a lot okay so make sure that you're playing it well and if you need any help with this just go and put it on slow motion I know it's a bit annoying but unlike my normal run I don't want this one to be like 35 minutes long okay and I do think it's easier so we can get away with it although if you do kind of prefer the videos where it's um a lot more kind of full run where I interject with commentaries throughout and then um, leave a lot of it just as the full gameplay, I'd be happy to kind of change the videos up to that style. So just let me know. But basically all we did there, we got Call to Arms upgraded to Homeland and now life was good. In the meantime, what you're going to do is you're going to keep overclocking the BRF for money and make sure you can get the Pirate Lord to Ultra Boost 10 before Tier 3. That helps a lot. And we built our final boat, which is a 500. And if you notice next to the Paxel, we now have a Permabrew. So that was a 500 Alchemist, okay? We buffed Paxel on Tier 1 with 400 and we get him 500 for Tier 3. And then I changed Paxel and got him all the way up to Rod, okay? Now notice here what I'm doing, which is a little bit odd. I'm actually targeting the Rod away from any of the balloons right now. He's only coming in to help really towards the end and when he's out of range. The reason I'm doing that is so that we can hoard as many pops as possible with the boats. This is extremely important, okay? You cannot... And I just died there, so I retargeted the rod um, at the end of the track for the final two schools to help. Okay, so you cannot afford to let the rod steal any of the pops, really. Like, use him as damage control for the horrible spawns at the end, okay? So when you're on the final two schools, that's completely fine. Just make sure you're timing um, hex and totems and stuff. But you cannot use him to be taking too many pops away. We're going for degree 40. I'm not sure how many pops that's needed off the top of my head, but I know we certainly end up getting over like five and a half million or five, definitely over five million, I believe, um, maybe six million for tier four. So do not let the rod steal really that many pops. And that means from 88 to 100, once the boss is killed, do not steal any as well. From 88 to 100, all I did was basically ultra boost the um, BRF to make some more money, okay? We're going to be fine on eco here. Now all we're going to do is let the boats do as much damage as possible. 
and now once you've got to around 105 so basically once you've got enough pops and don't let it get too late okay so you don't want to be doing this on like round 107 you'll get in some issues now go and get the boat gone you can sell as much as you need for it i managed to keep down homeland and ray of doom and honestly Keeping Ray of Doom helped a lot because now I can keep the Ray of Doom always at the end of the track. So for the Nasty Skulls, he's always going to help. And I actually used him a bit during Tier 5 just to help um, because any little extra DPS helps. But remember, the leaderboard is so free right now. So what you can do is, if you're having difficulty beating Tier 5 with just this setup, then there's no harm whatsoever in getting like a Mad or a Cripple or any extra stuff. We've got loads of leeway here from 65 to be able to stay in top 50. But... The degree 40 boat should annihilate it, okay? All you need to do is set him on strong for as long as he can. I will say this, make sure to change a Z Elite from strong to first at the very end. We need to make sure that Hex gets on the last bads. Now, what you'll see in this footage as well is just how insanely close, I didn't even realise it because I was playing on double speed for most of it, but just how insanely close the last bads got. So that makes me um, realise that maybe this strategy isn't as easy as it felt, it was more just because we did a co-op run beforehand and Feed Me Pie, um, you know, did a great strategy and Jandolf as well. So it felt um, easier than what it should be because I'd already done it, if that kind of makes sense, you know. You know when you've done it for the first time, then doing it again usually feels easier. But in terms of ability timings and stuff, I wasn't really caring that much at all, honestly, until it reached the final bits. So, um, yeah. But I would recommend, if you're having a little bit of difficulty with the final little section that you'll see shortly do add some extra dps and you'll be fine but yeah just remember your one goal get degree 40 um boat gone and then you've pretty much done it and getting the right position is very important to make sure but yeah this was honestly i'd say compared to normal this is a lot easier because i'm actually playing on double speed for a lot of this so the final two schools i'm not playing on double speed because i get a bit scary the mad i instantly target away then i'm gonna wait until these bads have landed once they've landed, use Hex, and I'm going to drop a Totem shortly as well. But I want to kind of save it so that it can do the last skull. As you can see, not very friendly at all. It gets a bit scary there, and it's going to get even scarier with the last skull. I'm now also changing the boat from strong to first, so that you can hook in the bads that spawn with a little bit more confidence. Um, okay, here we go. I did not realise how close this actually was. Um, okay, so the skull's about to pop. I've got the Totem down, and I've saved Hex for it as well. So we've got a big kind of, is that three or four bads? I can't fully see. Um, I'm going to use Hex. I'm going to pull one of them in. And then we're just kind of hoping. And as you can see, they're still not dead. They're still not dead. They're still not dead. And I thought for sure I was going to be dead there. And then somehow the game keeps continuing. So I survived. So that's the only bit you may have difficulty with. But you can just add an extra DPS tower. And you'll just have like a, a 70 or 75 score. And you're still going to be easily in the top 50. So I hope this has helped. Thank you guys for all the support. It really means a lot to me and I'll hopefully see you guys very soon.